Down the low. Well done, David De Gea to get to the low. Here's a Fernandez into Anthony. Anthony. Sancho. Poor first touch. Rashford. Rashford, 1-0. Against the runner play, we managed to score. Marcus Rashford opens the scoring for Manchester United. Wins the ball back for us. Gives it to Dolo. Anthony has Rashford ahead of him. Plays Rashford in between. In, in behind, sorry. In behind. And he actually scores. It's 2-0. It's a decent one-on-one -on -one battle between the two. Oh, what a pass. Chiesa with the goal. Akuna takes the ball down. He's being pressured by Dolo. Working his, himself into the ground. And he scored. He scored. Man like the low, you know. To catch up. And free if they want to if they want to go straight into the final. Without um, being involved in penalties. An extra time. Let's not even speak about that anymore. We don't even have to speak about that anymore. There's no possibility. Okay, so it's the season two finale of this Manchester United career mode. And I hope you guys are looking forward to today's episode. As you already know, we made it through to the Champions League final. So, yeah, the main uh, the main event is going to be the Champions League final for today's episode. But before we kick off in that Champions League final, we are going to be playing the last game of the season. The last game of the campaign in the Premier League against Wolverhampton at home. Where we're going to basically be rotating the side. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's just going to be quick highlights. I don't want the video to be prolonged like the previous finales that I've had on my channel. I'm going to try to keep it down to a minimum uh, in terms of the time length. Okay, by the end of this episode, you guys should be expecting to see a poll on my channel. So this poll is just going to be about who I should bring in in the summer. And um, yeah, each instruction is specific to certain positions, but not every position is a priority. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to narrow down what I want and what I need. And I'm going to get like the, the best three or the best four in the, in the actual scouting report or the the four or the three that catch my eye personally and um yeah i'm just gonna run a poll to see who you guys would prefer and then we'll make a decision from there so yeah be on the lookout for that by the end of this episode yeah we're gonna move on now let's quickly take a look at who we have next so wolverhampton is the next side we're facing off against wolverhampton have done really well this season a win for them will be really really vital simply because it helps them push for top four they will need to rely on Tottenham Hotspur to drop points on the final game and they will need for us to be terrible to allow them to win the three point or get the three points. As you can see, we have 99 points at the table. The towel's already clinched, so we don't have too much to do. And uh, yeah, things are looking really good for us at the minute. In terms of like top goal scorers, we have Marcus Rashford on 30 and Alexander Isaac on 29. So I don't know whether I should play Rashford for the final game of the season simply to help the man out. Um, I, it would be actually really unfortunate that Rashford will lose the golden boot simply because I didn't play him in the final game. So um, I might just play him off the bench or start him and then sub him off at half time. But yeah, let's get into the first game on this episode. Let's uh, let's uh, use this as a kind of a warm up and then uh, let's get into it. Okay, so for the final game of the season, we are going to have Lafont in gold. The lows at the back with Mengi, Maguire and Shaw. In the middle, we'll have McTomney and Fred as the two CDMs. On the right is Diallo. Our number 10 is Hannibal. On the left, we have Alanga. Up top, we have Marcus Rashford. Wolverhampton are going to start. Saar in goal. Kafal's at the back with Cody, Eagle and De Shiglio. In the midfield, they have Vorma, Neves and Oxley chamberlain Up top, they have Salamakers. Guedes and Gabby on the left hand side. Okay, let this game begin. Let the game begin. So it's the last game of the season of the Premier League campaign. And I'm sure you guys are looking forward to the ending of this episode where we're going to be taking on Real Madrid. But first, we have a task at hand. Let's try to get Marcus Rash with the golden boot. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Let's just um try to see our victory. End the season on a positive note. Uh, we've played really, really well from start to finish. Obviously, we had a few hiccups along the way. Obviously, my worst moment is being knocked out of the FA Cup, losing, uh, I think it was 4-1 to Man City, the third round. Then uh, we lost on penalties to Tottenham Hotspur in the quarterfinals, but we did really well to go on a run. Uh, we secured the Premier League mid-April. 
And then we have an opportunity to do the double. There's a Harry Maguire to Luke Shaw. Alanga. Who's uh, been nominated for Young Player of the, of the Season. Just waiting for you viewers to make up your mind who's going to win it. M Mukoko, Alanga, Diallo, or Timba. There's Mengi into Delo. Still deciding whether I want to keep Mengi on. Most likely won't. It's McTomney. Advantage played. Fred. Alanga. I tried to play a quick fire pass into Rashford. And it's intercepted. Go on short. Fred. Rashford. Oh. Jose Sars there to make the save or the block, however you want to describe that. But he did charge down the shot and does well to deny Rashford. Uh, Alanga puts the ball into the box. Header from McTomney and there's a save from Jose Sar. I think this was the issue the last time we played against Wolverhampton. I think Sar made a lot of saves and uh, he made it really difficult for us to score. The Shiglio. On the left hand side. Cuts it back. Neves. Outside the box takes a shot. There's a save from uh, Lafont. And Luke Shaw can recover the loose ball. The low. But Wolverhampton still have the ball. Ball's drilled into the box. It's blocked by Maguire. It's going to be another attempt. Let's get this ball cleared. Well done, Lafont. Clearing the lines. Hannibal, he couldn't get the ball into Alanga. Still more danger, Neves with a long shot. Again, Lafont is alert and it's going to be a corner kick. One last look at that save. Nice attempt from Ruben Neves outside the box. He could definitely hit it and uh, Lafont gets a strong hand to it. Uh, we're about to go into the interval. It's still 0-0 as, as it stands. Oh, no. He misses. He misses. It's not nil-nil. He missed an open goal. I think that's the defender. Borma. Very shocking miss. But yeah, we're going into the interval. It's nil-nil at the moment. I'm not too pleased with the way we're playing. And I'm not too pleased with the chance creations as well. So um, yeah, we definitely need to improve in the second half. Rashford's going to come off. He didn't really do enough to secure his golden boot. If he loses it out, loses out to uh, Alexander, it's like, that's his business. But yeah, we need to bring on Mukoko. Um, Hannibal, he, he's had a lot of game time this season, but he's not really impressed me, if I'm honest with you. Like, he's had individual performances that, um, that have stood out a bit, but he's not had enough of them. For the amount of game time he's been given, he's 21 years of age, so can't use um, youth as, as an excuse anymore. 21, you can thrive in a team like this. Might have to think about loading them out or moving them on. Luke Shaw. Go on, Alanga. Go on, Alanga. Mukoko. Hannibal. Diallo. Jose Sal with the save again. Rather um, disappointing finish from Diallo. Should, do, should be doing miles better, much better. From close range. As Wolverhampton look to hit me on the break. Here's Gudej. Gudej on the ball. Takes a shot, Lafont with the save. And uh, yeah, we can easily just play out from the back. Two changes. We are bringing on two Portuguese internationals. One of them is a youth player. So Goncalo Miranda is on. Uh, we are going to be replacing Hannibal. Amad Diallo is off for Shao Felix, who's going to be playing off the left. Alanga's taking that position on the right hand side now. So um, yeah, we've improved our final third ever so slightly. Well, not if so slightly, dramatically. I don't think Diallo's that great, if I'm honest with you. And, um, yeah, we brought on Goncalo Miranda, who's not really played too badly Anytime he's made a cameo. Speaking of Miranda, that's his first contribution, which is a completed pass to Fred. Luke Shaw cuts it back. Mukoko just couldn't get the ball out of his feet. Ball gets cleared, but Maguire can take the ball down from the clearance. Shao Felix switches play to the right hand side into Alanga. He pushes the ball down into McTomney. He gives the ball back into Alanga. He loses the ball straight away in the, uh, to the Shiglio. So 72 minutes gone. It's still 0 0. Quite a boring game, if I'm honest with you. Not too much happening. 
Okay, one last roll of the dice. 89 minutes on the clock. About to have two minutes added on. After the 90 minutes have been played. Mukoko, come on, man. This is a silly animation, the way he spins. Mukoko slips in Alanga. Alanga, see, this is what I mean. This is exactly what I mean, man. There's no way. There's no way you guys can't... Uh, you, can't you can't not rate Alanga. Alanga is just a G. He, like, he makes the runs when we need him to make the runs. He has a really good finish on him. He's really quick, very consistent. Whenever I play him, he just doesn't disappoint. And he's found a way to get us the three points in the dire moments of this game. It's now 1-0. Perfect way to end a perfect league campaign. There we have it. The Premier League campaign is over. We are now about to turn our attentions to the real big stage the champions league final i must say some of these fringe players have impressed durand i really like the look of him uh, same with uh goncarlo miranda alanga again still impressing me coming off the bench uh, he's just been a reserve player for majority of the season where he scored a lot of goals you would think that he was a part of the first team Okay, so now that the Premier League campaign is wrapped up, we can take a look at the stats. So as you can see, joint top goal scorer is Marcus Rashford and Alexander Izak with 30 goals apiece. With assists, Anthony tops the charts with 19 assists to Bruno Fernandes, 14, which is a fantastic amount of assists in one campaign for a winger. So after bagging himself 15 clean sheets, David De Gea has officially got in the golden glove for Manchester United. As you can see, Marcus Rashford is also running away with the golden boot in Europe with 12 goals and 10 matches in the Champions League. The only player that can catch up catch up to him at the moment is Vinicius Jr and he's only got seven goals in 12 matches unless he's planning to score about five goals or six goals in the final uh, yeah I'm pretty sure the European golden boot is going to Marcus Rashford so with that being said now let's uh take a look at the next fixture which is the Champions League final Manchester United against Real Madrid this is a massive final Man United haven't made it to a Champions League final since 2011 where we lost 3-1 to Barcelona who played us off the park we're facing another Spanish side another Spanish giant which is ironic that they are the main rivals to Barcelona Real Madrid let's see if we can beat the record holders for this competition and uh yeah let's secure our fourth European title hopefully in terms of my starting 11 I'm very very indecisive of who's going to start which uh formation to pick at the moment we are getting more goals from 4-3-3 but we look really structured with 4-2-3-1. Uh, 4-2-3-1 uh, might be the smart approach, the tactical approach. 4-3-3 would just be me trying to play them off the park and look really good while winning the Champions League. So I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. And uh, by the time we get into the game, we have obviously would have decided. So yeah, give me some time and I'm going to figure things out. I'm going to take a look at some of the stats of these players and uh, evaluate who deserves to play and start in the final. Okay, so these are the lineups for the Champions League final. We're going to start off with Manchester United. And uh, we are going to be using our 4-3-3 formation. And we have David De Gea in goal. The lows at the back with Lindelof, Martinez and Malasio. In the middle, we have Fernandes, Benacer and Eriksen. Rashford is our number nine. On the right-hand side is Anthony. And on the left is Shao Felix, who gets the nod ahead of Jadon Sancho. Okay, so Carlo Ancelotti, he's going to be using a 4-3-3 formation as well. He has Courtois and goal. Baku's at the battle of Tar, Rudiger and Davis. In the middle, they have Schirmeni, Valverde, Fekir. Our number nine, or their number nine, is Benzema. On the left, they have Vinicius Jr. And on the right-hand side, they have Rodrigo. And the game is about to get underway. And uh, as you can see, we're attacking to the right. They are attacking to the left as the game is kicked off. So, yeah. I'm just hoping for a strong start. Just hoping uh, that we can be in the game this time around. Last season in the Europa League final, PSG dominated from start to finish. And uh, I don't know how 
managed to um to uh, take a fight to them because uh we did score goals against the run of play so yeah we're just moving this ball around the back eight minutes gone still yet to have a shot on goal here's Malassia Ericsson plays it to his left here's uh Shao Felix Ericsson Malassia, no. <laughs> that was a that was a good idea though. Malassia was trying to creep in behind. Let me try to fizz a ball into him. It's cut out as Real Madrid look to come forward now. It's for Kier. Shermeni. Vinicius. Tries to pass the ball past. Martinez, what's going on here? Shot from Benzema, save from David De Gea. It's a corner kick. Marcus Rashford's the top goal scorer currently as uh, as it stands. 12 goals in the in the Champions League. Unless Vinicius Jr. scores about six in the final. It's unlikely that anyone will be able to catch up to him. Can he bag himself a goal in the final? Can he show uh, his class? Show that he's a big game player. Let's see. Unless it gives the ball away to Rodrigo. Benzema proceeds to make a run and behind Rodrigo finds him. Benzema runs out wide with the ball to the right-hand side. Malassia tracking back to try to apply some pressure. Rodrigo tries to play the ball into, bo into the box and it doesn't get past Lindelof. Well done, Eriksson. Bathing the challenges from the Real Madrid players. Come on, ref, man. They need to start giving out yellow cards for handballs on this game because that is so deliberate. 19 minutes gone. Still yet to have a shot on target or a shot at the goal. Let alone just uh, being on target. Then that's it. Struggling. We're struggling to create chances at the moment. Real Madrid are just sitting back really deep. And hitting me on the break each time. And it's been working. It's hard for me to... To keep up with them on the break. They are very quick. Faster than I, I, than I expected, if I'm honest with you. Sure, many outside the box. Valverde. Watch him make an impossible pass. No, he doesn't. He takes a shot. And of course, David De Gea, he parries it into the pathway of Rodrigo. So Real Madrid have taken the lead. They are one nil up. I won't lie to you. I won't lie to you. They seem really difficult to tame up front. David De Gea should be doing much better than this. Valverde, I'm not too sure how he even managed to get a shot off, but he did. And uh, Carlo Ancelotti and his side lead the way in the final. Martinez. Move the ball sharper than that. Well done. There's uh, Rashford. Rashford, go on. Make it. Oh, my goodness me. I hit the bar. I hit the bar. I thought it was about to be 1-1. One, one. Ball goes in. Played out by Jonathan Tart. Ericsson. Benassir. They've got Robertson at right back. This game's just ridiculous now. <laughs> They've got Robertson at right back. There's uh, Martinez. Rashford, Rashford, cuts it back. I was aiming for Fernandez. It went to Felix, and it did. It actually didn't even go to Felix. <laughs> it was a lot lost to pass to Felix, and it got cut out. This game, this game, it, it can't be doing this now. <laughs> Please don't script in the final. <laughs> out, of all, out of all days, don't do it today. <laughs> it's Malasio. Wins the ball back from Rodrigo. Oh, come on, man. Everybody's being marked out of the game. Ericsson. Malassia. Rashford. What is that, man? What kind of pass is that? This this is why I say this game is such a cheat sometimes. Like, how, how do you fail to make a pass that's so simple? <laughs> 36 minutes gone. It's still 1-0 to Real Madrid. And uh, at the moment, things aren't going our way. Let's just say that. Here's Malassia. Rashford outside the box. Right foot shot. Finally. Finally. We've got a goal. I don't think you understand how frustrating it was getting. Marcus Rashford with a banger outside the box. Big game player. Big game player. Big game player. Malassia plays it. Cuts it back into Rashford. He just turns. Opens his body up. Shapes to shoot. And he finds that top right hand corner. Couture. 
the big stature of him just couldn't stop it. He just couldn't. It's 1-1. Fernandez into Benasir. Malassia switches play to the left-hand side. Go on Malassia up against Robertson. And uh, of course, Malassia is going to have a knock. There's Rodrigo. The question is, do we even have the personnel? I don't think we do. I think we've only got a right back on the bench. Come on, Malassia, pass the ball. Why do you need to do some stupid animation and get caught in possession? Oh my goodness me, this is what I mean. This is what I mean. It just doesn't make any sense. Why is Malassia doing some weird... In it's 2-1 to Real it's two, it's two Madrid. It's 2-1. It just doesn't make any sense. So, I just looked in the menu. We've had about 120 plus passes. They've had about 38 passes. It, that, that's exactly what's happening right now. And that's exactly why I'm losing my cool. But the second half is underway. And uh, hopefully we can change this around. Um, committing so many bodies. All my players are forward. But no one's, no one's doing much up front. I don't get it. And then once they hit me on the break, Malassi has to run back and race back. Go on, Anthony. Take a shot. Tars in the way. Benzema. Fakir. Vinicius. Nice challenge there from Victor Lin. Lopez Rodrigo. Vinicius. Vinicius Jr. Well done, Martinez. Malassia wins the ball back. Rashford on the ball. Shao Felix. Plays it in behind. Go on, Rashford. Someone support him. Malassia's there to support him. Malassia with the left foot shot. Tar with the block. And uh, he follows up with a clearance. Ericsson heads it into Benesir. It's Ericsson. Felix. All played in. Anthony. <sighs> Tried to head it down into Ericsson. And uh, ball's been cut out inside the penalty area. This is why I wanted to go with 4 2 3 1. This is why I wanted to go, go with 4 2 3 1. Simply because. Things like this happen. My players get overrun. They don't know what to do with themselves. There's a... Felix. Rashford, make the run. Felix, play the ball. I don't understand what, why, like, why there's a lot of delays going on here. What a shocking pass. What a shocking pass. Felix, you're off. You're off, man. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm done. We've got about 29 minutes to salvage something. I haven't got time to carry people. Go on, Martinez. Well done. Ericsson. Rashford. Felix. Shao Felix. Shao Felix. From goal. Shao Felix makes it 2 2. I was just about to take the man off. He's managed to equalize. Shao Felix might put his name in history for Manchester United if we go on to win this. Joining in January for a record fee of 115 million. And now he could potentially make the headlines in the final for bagging the equalizer. Look at this. Coolly finished, nicely tucked away. And Courtois, he was in no man's land. It looks like I might have to cancel that sub now. Okay, so it's 2-2 now in the London Stadium. Four goals, and they're both being shared by both sides. And uh, yeah, Shao Felix, it's another player on the score sheet. Four different players on the score sheet. We have Rodrigo, Benzema, Rashford and Felix. Speaking of Rodrigo, he's on the ball and gives it up to Malassia. He blocks the initial ball into the box. Felix back into Malassia. Rashford has a bit of space, has a lot of green to run into. Left foot shot, Marcus Rashford takes the lead for United. 67 minutes gone. Rashford has a brace in the final. That's his 14th European goal this season. Oh, the way we've turned this game around. I mean, we were the better side by far. Throughout this game, we've been the better side. I don't know how we were in a, in a deficit position. One last look at this finish. Left foot shot across Courtois. Again, Courtois beaten for the third time in this game. Just couldn't stop it. Won't keep that in. Managed to keep that in. Gonna play all the way back to the keeper. Rather that than it go out for a Real Madrid throw in. He gives it back to Malassia. Ericsson switches play to the right-hand side. The low. Takes the ball down nicely. 
on Benesir. So she'll range of passing. You even get the time and space. Your man, he's all over me. Malasia. Ericsson. This is what I'm like. I have to get, I have to tilt my hat to Real Madrid too, though. I can't hate on them because they've sat back. Their organization, um, obviously, is that good to the point it's frustrated me. As you can see, a lot of sideways passing, going back and forth to tr to just try like get an opportunity to play a ball in behind, not even to try get a shot on goal. They're very solid and very structured. Okay, so Sancho, Fred, and uh, who's the other guy? Timber. <laughs> Yeah, they've made their way onto the pitch. Our first three substitutions have come in the final 10 minutes. The Lowe's made his way off. So has Ericsson and uh, Charles Felix, the goal scorer. Fernandez switches played nicely to Malasia. Fred, Malasia. Does the same. Switches play to Timber. Timber puts the ball into the box. Can Sancho get ahead on it? Nope. Robertson wins the aerial duel. Vinicius tried to do the same with him and Fernandez. He does, but doesn't go far. As United still have the ball. Still piling on pressure on Real Madrid. Fred with the shot and is charged down by a white shirt. And uh, we have Benzema going forward. Well done, Lindelof. Really solid in the second half. I feel like my defenders have massively improved in the second half. There's uh, Fred. Benacer. Timber. Fernandez. Nice pass to the left-hand side. Malasia, Fred. Oh, oh, I tried to do one of them powered shots. <laughs> Jada Sancho was caught in possession. Lindelof. Anthony takes the ball down nicely. Here's uh, Fernandez. Couldn't find Anthony. And I'm pretty sure that's it. I'm pretty sure this is it. Go on, referee. Do the honours. Referee, do the honors. What are you playing at? What are you playing at, ref? What is this referee playing at? The game is over. Now we have finally done it. We have won the Champions League. Manchester United have waited since 2008 to be on that podium on the grand stage. So our determination, our fight, our resilience has got us to this point. Players are making their way onto the podium. There we go, Manchester United about to lift this for the fourth time. Martinez has lifted up the European trophy for Manchester United. That's our fourth European title. That's Martinez's first European title as Manchester United captain. Okay, I'd like to thank everyone who's made it this far in this video. Please remember to smash that like button, sub to the channel if you're new, and hit that notification bell. Uh, we finally done it. It looked like we were going to lose at some point. I'm not going to lie to you. This game was a tough game. Real Madrid defended their asses off and uh, we worked our asses off to break them down and we did eventually. Okay, so we managed to bag a Champions League trophy. We managed to finally bag a European title and uh, yeah, that was a really, really um, intense game. Mad, mad close, mad close um, in terms of the scoreline. In terms of stats, I'm not going to lie, it was so lopsided. That's why I was getting frustrated. I apologize for those um, who do tune in for unbiased commentary, but I'm not going to lie. A final like that, an occasion like that, I just can't, I can't, ha I can't help it. I want to win. I want to win. I've already lost in a European final, uh, European final just before that in the Europa League against PSG. And uh, I just hated the way my, my players played in that game. I love the way my players played in this match, except things weren't going our way until up until a certain point. But yeah. Uh, what are you going to expect now for from this video? So what we're gonna do now is just basically recap the season So find out who's won the their league campaigns who's won which trophy um, Look at the player stats on our team overall and then we're gonna talk a bit about the viewers player of the year and young player of the year awards So yeah, without further ado Let's uh, get it started. Okay. So now because we made it to the end of the season everything has been concluded including the premier league so we're gonna go through the table so as you can see manchester united we finished on top of the table with 102 points second place of manchester city with 81 points on the table third place was chelsea with 77 points and fourth place was spurs with 71 points so that's the top four concluded fifth place we have wolverhampton they got 68 points on the table sixth was newcastle they got 66 arsenal were seventh with 65 
West Ham United are on 61 points and they finished 8th. Liverpool, they finished ninth with 57 points. And 10th place was Aston Villa. So they managed to bag a top 10 finish with 57 points. So yeah, if you want to take a look at the bottom half of the table, again, I would say pause the video because uh, yeah, it'll be a bit long to go through every team on the table. But yeah, the bottom three, it consists of Fulham, Watford and Preston in that exact order. So Fulham, they finished 18th for 29 points. Watford, they finished 19th for 27 points. And Preston, they got relegated with only 21 points and they finished 20th. Leeds United, they managed to crawl out of the relegation battle just about, uh, just by one point. So hats off to them for surviving on the final day. And obviously Crystal Palace, Middlesbrough and Leicester City and Nottingham Forest, they survived without any issues. So in the championship, Brentford and Sheffield United, they've got automatic promotion. Brentford winning the championship by not, um, just by goal difference, sorry. I was about to say by two points, but by goal difference. Uh, yeah, Sheffield United and Brentford, they're automatically promoted. We don't know who's going to make it through the playoffs because we don't get to see, but uh, taking part in the playoffs was Southampton, Brighton, Norwich and West Bromwich Albion. So the side that we smashed in the round of 16 ended up topping League Un by, by a massive surprise. Uh, they won the league by one point with 88 points to Monaco's 87. PSG finished third with 86. In the Bundesliga, RB Leipzig continue, continue to do well. So RB Leipzig, they've won the league with 84 points on the table. Bayern Munich, they were 14 points behind them and their second place was 70 points. So in Serie A, Juventus ended up winning the Scudetto. So as you can see, they got 86 points on the table to Lazio's 82 and Lazio were the side that finished second. PSV won the Eredivisie with 77 points on the table. Although they won in the Liga Portugal uh, with 93 points on the table to SC Braga's 81. Real Madrid, they ended up winning the La Liga. So as you can see, Real Madrid, they won the league with 95 points. Atletico Madrid, they finished second with 76 points. Barcelona finished third with 75 points. So Real Madrid, they, um, yeah, they separated themselves completely, just like us, to be fair. And it makes sense to why they were the finalists in the Champions League. So those were the major leagues around Europe that just got covered. Now it's time to take a look at some of the cup competitions that we can visually see. So at the start of the season, we played in the Community Shield and we ended up winning 4-0 against Sheffield United. Manchester City, they ended up winning the FA Cup. They won in the final against Arsenal. The side that knocked us out in the third round went all the way and uh, booked themselves a spot in the Community Shield next season. So it looks like Manchester City ended up doing the domestic double. They won the FA Cup and now they've won the EFL Cup. They won on penalties against West Ham United. They won 5-4. So in this season's Super Cup, Manchester City again, they won another trophy. So they kind of done a treble in some sort of way. They won 2-0 against PSG. So um, yeah, PSG, they won the Europa League the season before that. And Manchester City bagged themselves their first Champions League the season before that. And last but not least, as you can see, Manchester United, they've uh, won the Champions League. So yeah, we are now four-time European champions. And uh, we will look to basically try to defend it next season. And we're going to be taking part in the Super Cup next year. In the Europa League, RB Leipzig they bought themselves a spot in the Super Cup uh, next season as well they won 3-1 against Inter Milan so in the third term of Europe Arsenal they ended up winning the ECL they won 2-1 in the ECL final against Ajax so now we're done talking about the competitions we're going to talk a bit about some of our players and how they got on the season so we're going to start off by talking about goal contributions as you can see Rashford he's got the most goals with 46 goals to his name and he's also got 15 assists which also means he's got the most goal contributions overall in the squad uh, second place is Martial on the goal scorers chart as you can see he got 16 goals to his five assists so that gives him about 21 goal involvements and 30 appearances so within 46 appearances Anthony got 13 goals and 26 assists fantastic season for him Mukoko is his debut season for us in a Manchester United shirt he got 12 goals in all comps and five assists 17 goal involvements in 26 Appearances. Anthony Alanga, one of the players that shot me this season, he managed to bag himself 39 appearances and within those 39 appearances he's got 12 goals and 11 assists giving him a 23 goal contribution output. So Bruno, 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 45 appearances, 12 goals and 18 assists so that's about 30 goal contributions and 45 appearances which is fantastic. Jadon Sancho got about 12 goals and 13 assists. So that's 25 goal involvements and 42 appearances. And Shao Felix, he got about nine goals and seven assists in 23. So um, yeah, we're gonna quickly talk a bit about players I no longer want at the club anymore. So as you can see, Ericsson, um, he did contribute quite a lot this season. 
but I felt like our midfield was lacking pace, lacking a oomph, lacking drive in some of the games where we use Ericsson, simply because he can only really play as a deep line playmaker. So he has to be a bit deep. He can't really help out with the attack or be too, like, uh, too involved in the final third because he just doesn't have the engine or the stamina. He ended the season with a 6.46 average rating, which is very worrying given the fact that we gave him a lot of game time and uh, especially the fact he was moaning at the start of the season about his game time. Ahmad Diallo, I know he's still quite young, he's 21 years of age, but just judging by the amount of game time he got, the amount of times I was uh, reluctant to use him over certain players in the position that he currently plays in, I feel like it's probably best to loan him out one more time or probably sell him in the summer. So I'm going to experiment once we get back to season three. So despite his good average rating, Luke Shaw, he's on the chopping block. As you can see, he's only bagged 20 appearances and uh, compared compared to Malasia, that is a, that's a small amount of games. And it's only because I've been very reluctant to use him. I've not enjoyed using him. He's only managed to bag himself seven clean sheets in, uh, within 20 appearances. And um, yeah, he's just very slow getting back. His stamina is poor. And he's always complaining about game time, even though he doesn't deserve the game time that he's asking for. And last but not least, Hannibal. Um, this is someone that I did put some faith in and put some hope in. So I don't know. I don't know what to do with Hannibal. I'm probably going to loan him out. If there's a chance of loaning him out, I'll take it. If no one wants to loan him out, I'm probably just going to move him on and sell him. And it also depends on his performance in the upcoming preseason tournament as well. As you can see, he ended the season with a 6.03 average rating, which is really shocking. For someone that did get the amount of game time that he did, he did start quite a few games. I know a lot of the games he come off the bench, but still 6.03, there's no excuse for that, especially in a side like Manchester United. On my page, I decided to run a poll so you guys could decide who gets the player of the year or young player of the year award at the end of the season. So yeah, I made it a bit interactive this year. So without further ado, we're about to get into it. So for me this season, my player of the year is Alessandro Martinez simply because he was very solid at the back. He was really good at organizing, a true leader, threw himself into challenges, threw himself in front of shots, and he organized the defense very, very well. And uh, he also had good stats. If you take a look at his stats, 39 appearances, he managed to bag himself 17 clean sheets and got himself two goals and ended the season with an average rating of 7.40. And my young player of the season is Anthony Alanka, simply because I never hesitated to sub him on or put him on the bench. Whenever I put him on the bench and subbed him on, I knew he was going to give a performance. And often or not, he did come off the bench to bag a goal or bag winners here and there. And uh, as you saw, from his uh, late winner against Wolverhampton in this episode, this guy has been very crucial as a fringe player. Um, I feel like he's going to be ready for next team, uh, first team football next season. And uh, it's going to be hard for him to try and uh, go up against Felix and Sancho, but I'm sure he's going to be ready for the task. He ended the season with 39 appearances, 12 goals and 11 assists, and he got an average rating of 6.99. Okay, so Marcus Rashford ended up getting the viewers play of the season. As you can see, he ended the season with an average rating of 7.41. He also ended the season with 46 goals and 15 assists, making that 61 goal involvements and 45 appearances, which is a which is pretty much Messi and Ronaldo S numbers at their peak. Viewers young player of the season. So as you can see, Yusuf Mukoko, he got that. You guys voted for him. He outvoted Alanga, Diallo, and also Timber. He managed to bag himself 12 goals and five assists. That's 17 goal involvements and 26 appearances. He also ended the season with an average rating of 6.87. So yeah, I feel like this guy, he's done really well. It's his first season. He did come off the bench quite a lot of the time. He didn't get enough game time on the field um, but in terms of his appearances I feel like he featured enough for me to feel optimistic about his future uh, chances of breaking into the first team so maybe next season because Martial is injury prone he'll get even more game time and he will flourish even more because he has increased and developed since he's joined us so with the club honours as you can see we've got two league titles one domestic cup and one continental cup so the league titles came from this season and last season and uh, we got the Carabao cup last season as well and we just bagged ourselves the champions league so yeah next season i'm looking to bolster my squad um quite heavily i know um some of the targets that i've put up it's gonna be really um unrealistic with the amount of money that i'm probably going to spend next season but i do want to have a good b team a lot of the time this season i did rotate especially in the fa cup especially in the Carabao cup and i noticed the dip in quality whenever i needed to look upon the bench 
um, I was always reluctant to bring people on and sub players off simply because I felt like we were, we were lessening the attacking threat, we were, we were worsening the defensive ability. So yeah, my goal in saves is to probably build a dynasty and try to create a side where even if we do rotate, we are still competing at the highest level. So I want my B team to be good enough to compete for top four at least, my first team to be able to obliterate the league. Um, if you guys are, have been subbed to the channel since FIFA 22, you guys already know how I set up my saves and how I, how I play my saves. So eventually I do want to dominate across all competitions. And um, yeah, I definitely want to buck up my ideas when it comes to the domestic trophies. But yeah, we've come to the end of the season. We've come to the end of the episode. And uh, I would like to say a special thank you to everyone that's uh, supported the channel um, so far. Everyone that's tuned in from episode one up to episode 27. Everyone that's tuned in from episode 16 up to episode 27. Um, yeah, I'm really grateful for the support that you guys have been showing. I'm grateful for everyone that's getting involved and like on a day-to-day -day basis on the channel, like with polls, commenting, leaving likes, and I'm just leaving suggestions as well, giving me feedback on my content. I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, I hope to see you guys soon for season three. We are going to be um, doing uh, season three for Everton next. So that is the next um, content that's going to be coming out. We're going to mix it up a bit in between and have a few FM videos come out as well. Um, so yeah, we're not going to rush back to the Manchester United career mode. Season three will get on the way in due time. So yeah, be patient if you're only here for the Manchester United career mode on FIFA 23. But yeah, um, I think that's about it. I think um, I've covered everything. So yeah, I am going to be running polls as well. I'm going to run a poll around 10 p.m. and 10.15. There's going to be four polls for about um, four transfer targets next season in the summer. So um, yeah, let your voices be, be heard. Uh, make sure you, you vote for the players that you want to see brought in during the polls. And uh, yeah, I'll try to address um, those positions and try to get those players in. So yeah, hope to see you guys soon. Hope to see you guys soon. It won't be too long because like I said, I'm going to be uploading Everton and some FM videos as well. So um, take care for now. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. Peace.